You know, we're going to have an opportunity this evening with two uh, distinguished members of the legislature with uh, deep background in agricultural issues. And I thought um, one of the things to introduce our viewers to how we prepare for this program, before we go on the air, we have a chance to visit a little bit about some of our uh, relative uh, backgrounds and ways in which perhaps that might be helpful in helping the viewers with the issues of the day. And I learned that both of you uh, represent, of course, um, industries that have, are heavily involved in uh, the ag field and in particular uh, meat processing. And I thought we would spend a little bit of time talking about how things are going in your communities um, and uh, some of the experiences and issues uh, because those have been in the news a little bit of late. And let's start with you, Representative Poppy. I believe you've got the Hormel plant in your district. I certainly do. Um, we are known as Spamtown USA, so um, we do. We are proud of um, the Hormel and having the, the packing plant and the workers there and making sure that um, they are doing the job to get food out to people mm -hmm. and get to the grocery stores. So um, definitely uh, this COVID-19 experience has been um, putting the pressure on a number of uh, packing plants, uh, trying to make sure that their workers are healthy and that they can, can continue to go to work and can continue to be able to uh, do the job that we are, we all kind of depend on them to continue doing. We don't think so, about it very often, no, but they're really important. But very important. So uh, I know Hormel has been doing uh, just a remarkable job of trying to make sure that uh, you know they they take temperatures every day every shift to make sure people are coming in that are mm -hmm. healthy they're encouraging people to stay home to do everything that they are doing um, they're they're making sure people get tests if they are indicating that they have some illness whatever it might be mm -hmm. they're um, saying you know that they have to stay away if they get tested even if it's a negative test for probably three days mm -hmm. so they're really working on trying to make sure there's good safety for the workers and good um, you know that we can keep the plant going because if we don't you know 40,000 uh, pigs a day uh, won't get slaughtered. Um, and that is something that unfortunately um, we have seen what that yeah. does, that the backup that that can create and the, the crisis it creates in the animal agriculture world. So we wanna make sure that they continue to be able to operate. And Senator Weber, I believe you were telling me that you've got at least two, maybe three plants that are in some measure affected by, or uh, that are involved with your district. Tell our viewers a little bit about that. Well, yes, actually at Laverne, uh, we are 30 miles east of the Smithfield plant in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which was hit with COVID and had to shut down. And 30, we are 30 miles west of uh, the JBS plant in Worthington, which was also hit with COVID and, and had to shut down for a while. Uh, actually, with the loss of those two plants, uh, that was over 40,000 head per day that, uh, that hogs were ready and they did not have a place to go to, to be, um, enter the food chain, basically. Basically, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's uh, and some of my operators, uh, quite frankly, they they marketed most of their hogs in those two locations, and so it's been a been a real struggle for for some of them, and and even as um, and I also have uh, prime pork in Wyndham, uh, which. Uh, between five and 6,000 a day. And premium Minnesota pork is scheduled to open in early June in Laverne. Um, and they, uh, they bought a previous, so well, it started out as mid-pack, then IBP, and then it was owned by Golden Plump. And now it's, it's been bought for hog uh, slaughter. And, uh, and they are looking at probably starting out with roughly 4,500 head per day. Um, but yes, it's, it's been a real challenge. Uh, we have uh, the JBS plant is up and running and uh, is probably running 60 to 70% of capacity as far as I know. And um, they've been working, I visited with the Commissioner of Health and Commissioner of Agriculture and, and the company's been working with them to do proper distancing as much as it is possible within a large plant with that. And then of course, provide protective uh, personal equipment, uh, protective equipment for um, those that, um, uh, you know, if you can't be separated by distance mm -hmm. that you have uh, certainly uh, the proper protective gear available. Uh, so we're hopeful that that will continue to go well. Um, we've had over 1,300 diagnosed, positive diagnoses in Nobles County, which uh, is the county in which JBS is located, but uh, there have only been two deaths, and of course two, one death is too many, but uh, it uh, the hospitals have been uh, 
done a tremendous job working with the Department of Health and, uh, and have been handling the situation. And some of the more serious cases uh, have went to the, the main hospital for the system over in Sioux Falls. But uh, at this point in time, uh, the number of cases per day has been overall basis tending, trending downward. And uh, hopefully uh, we can continue to see that happen. I saw the governor, so we pretty much stick to Minnesota here, but but I did see the governor of South Dakota talking a little bit about the Smith, Smithfield plant uh, a couple of weeks ago that it was going to be reopening. Has it reopened? Do you know yet? You know, I, they, they had brought some people back to actually start uh, the cut up of those uh, animals that were in mm -hmm. cold storage and, and working through that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what their numbers are if they've actually started their kill operation yet. All right. Well, very good.